I'm making transition and I go right into, into the next the, stance. Yeah. But what's important about here is I'm going through my center. Yeah. I'm not hopping and mm -hmm. going around my center. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm actually just fluidly just stepping through my center. Yeah. And just boom, through my center. And a really important concept. And it's beautiful with regards to surfing because surfing is progressing uh, more and more towards uh, fluency and switch footing. It's already prevalent now in snowboarding. You see uh, Sean White, for example, who's a very, uh, is an amazing skater and, and snowboarder. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, he's um, phenomenal in that, you know, he's fluent on both sides and it's giving him all the points and, he, and, and now they're scoring, you know, they score really high if you land or you, you, um, you do these switch foot moves. If you can do both. And do both, because yeah. that's, he's pushing the edge. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's happening in surfing. I know it's happening in my surfing, mm -hmm. and I see it just happening in a lot mm -hmm. of surfing. Yeah, I've, I've watched it on, on video too. Yes. And you know, uh, a longboard uh, is a great format in learning how to switch foot. And then when you, you know, the, the board gets shorter, it gets a little more difficult, but then, you know, that longboard is, is sort of the ur or the archetypal format that you can learn how to switch foot. Yeah. Okay, so that's enough probably about the E stance. Mm-hmm. Um, well, then you go into this O stance, and that's also in martial arts, where, where there's, you know, O, the old gesture in O is, is like so, it's this embracing gesture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, 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 where the limbs want to go go towards themselves, not out like in the A. Mm -hmm. yeah, We're that not would crossing be. like the A. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not stretching like the E. Yeah. It's, it's, in this, it's in this pulling one's to, oneself together. Yeah. And you have that in, in martial arts. I believe they call it the Kibidachi stance. Uh-huh. And, um, and that's, and you see it's, it. And your hips can be totally free. Your hips can be totally free. And see, I, I've learned how to, how to create this, this independence that they just, that my mm -hmm. hips are float, they float. I can do it too. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> and, it, and, that, and that has to do with that sloshy, you know, it's, uh, I do that because I'm not tight. Mm -hmm. It's because it's all relaxed and yeah. freed up. Yeah. And so in martial arts, you, you're using that. And you see it in skiing also. Mm hmm Because in skiing, when, when you snow, when you, I think you call it snow plowing or... or yes, yes, it, that's what you call it, yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you go you from the to, ooh stance yeah. when you're skiing. Yeah, yeah. You can see already when the ooh, you're, yeah. you're in it's this... Straight. Yeah, and then when you want to slow down, you see you... You have to put yeah, it together. Yeah, there's almost this A happening with your skis even. If you, yeah. They cross up, then you fall. But, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's that oh, there's that, there's that coming around it's embracing yeah it's a, it pulls things back in yeah and then and then the ooh is even pulled in even more yeah and so and, and that's you know in just our, our just standing it's, we're mostly an ooh a lot of times yeah either ooh or or kind of an open awe stance yeah but that ooh is pretty essential mm -hmm. and and in other words with the ooh you have the parallel you have this parallel, yeah, like, like they, two. In other words, you make two go in the same direction. Exactly, and you can start to use, you can see that, how that would, yeah. you know, if that were to go out into the infinitely distant plane, they would mm -hmm. probably cross somewhere, you know, apparently. Or come back to each other. They could back to each other, <laughs> yeah. And here they're, they're crossing pretty much right away, and mm -hmm. it has a relationship. You can see there, there's a relationship to the A and the O. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. And there's a relationship to the A uh, and to the O uh, too. And the but, well, if you if you take if you take this away, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, yeah, that, 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 is, that is interesting because you know in the in the old you know in, in ancient Greek you know those uh -huh. those it's things. It's a doorway. Were, yeah, those things were. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It really is. It's all it's all sort of cipher and code. Uh, and then you can, and then you can have a look to see, like you said, um, when you're doing anything, let's say doing housework or something, and mm -hmm. what kind of a stance do you have? Yes. You know, how yeah. do you peel the potato? Yeah. You know, yeah. is it toward you or is it away from you? You know. Exactly. Yeah. So you can you can see a lot, and uh, you know, you get more conscious of all the moves that you do. Exactly. Agree. Yeah. And 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 again, these are archetypes. You, you, once you start to. Once you start to understand them, you'll start to see them everywhere. Yeah. It's like um, it's like when you when you when you uh, you want something or, or you know like. Well, I, they I, used they used to say with the Volkswagens. Once you once you see one one Volkswagen, then you see lots of them. 
Volkswagen? Uh, yeah. Exactly. It's just exactly what I was going to say. Is that when, when, when I, you know, became a Volkswagen owner, when I, yeah, yeah, when yeah. I bought my, my split window 66. Yeah, yeah, you see them everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> you see, because in that, and you're with me, really, we, we need to give birth to that awareness yeah. that we're, we're decoding and we're seeing these archetypes everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's, there's a future for you with me in the sense of, uh, yeah. of uh, being an inclusive and an in, all. And then you can go back and see how it is related to the sounds, the way they come out of the mouth. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the ah uh, is oh, totally mm. open, yeah. right? And then the ooh is way forward. Ooh, you can see it's pulling yeah. it around. The oh, oh, you know, when exactly. you can oh, I mean, it's so you, obvious. You, you can do it also with the consonants. Yes. To, to put them through the mouth and see. That's right. What is the progression, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah we that's go. Right. Yeah. Well, so much for today. And uh, who knows what else we come up with. Right. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much, Dean. Thank and you, Marianne. We'll talk to you later. Yes. So, Dean, here we are. What are we going to do now? Okay. Um, we're going to talk about the sounds, specifically L and R. Okay. And a little bit about the sound B. Okay. So, L, mm -hmm. L, and R, and B. Okay. Sort of the, the root to, sounds. To start that, uh, um, why do you suppose the English language doesn't roll the R? Oh, I, uh, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because you can roll it, you Yeah, because when I learned English, it was Robert Rowley rolled around, roll around. In other words, it wasn't Robert Rowley rolled around. Yeah, yeah. They didn't do that. Well, my take on it is that the English R is more horizontal. Okay. And not as vertical. Uh huh. Uh huh. It, it kind of Spir maybe more of a spiral or something. Uh, could be. I don't get the sense that it. You know, uh, 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 you can feel it's it's rolling this way. Yeah. And, uh, it's flattened yeah, it's, out. Yeah, it's flattened out. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Out. it's amazing actually how the. Uh, I mean, the Eastern languages uh, like Russia and so, uh, Czechoslovakia, they all have very very strong rolling. Rolling bars. Bars, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So now what are we going to do? Okay, so we're going to go back to this fourfold uh, archetype again, which is really, of course, it's you know, it's the, it's sort of the heart of your me, this yeah. fourfold archetype. Mm -hmm. um, there, Rudolf Steiner breaks up the the these uh, the consonantal sounds. He's, he talks about that there are these, there were those five archetypal vowel sounds. Right. Um, and then he talks about uh, there's 12 archetypal consonantal sounds. Right. These different family groupings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and he grouped them in four distinct um, levels, which is related to earth, water, air, and fire again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So up here, uh, for example, mm -hmm. these are sounds, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Zzz, Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? These are all breath mm -hmm. sounds. All yeah. they're all you have to use your you have to use coming out. It's all it's all right. Yeah, coming out. And then down here you have like b k d t n um g you know, all these earth sounds. Where everything is brought in hell comes to a halt. Comes to a halt, and these all go off. Mm -hmm. He calls mm -hmm. so he calls these fire sounds. Mm -hmm. And he calls these earth right. sounds. Earth sounds. Mm -hmm. And then, and there's more. I'm not going to go into them all right now. Mm -hmm. Well, um, people can find them themselves. Yeah, because um, also you know M. It's also uh, mm -hmm. an earth sound, even though it, uh, I call it a, the mud sound. Mm -hmm. um, and then Rudolf Steiner talks about there's one airy sound, mm -hmm. and he says there's one watery sound. And that's really funny, isn't it? Well, it's, it's just a curious thing, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and why? So, and so I ask these questions, well, why, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. the whole idea behind applied eurythmies to ask why. So he talks about R as being the, the, the airy sound. Okay. And he talks about the sound L as being the water sound. Mm-hmm. 
Air has an R in it. Water doesn't. Isn't that funny? Uh -huh. So it's interesting here that... Um, but it has whoop like the wave in it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's not our language, English language. Uh, also, the, yeah, the, the wa is also here too, so mm -hmm. as a consonant, mm -hmm. but it does yeah. have... As an know. earth sound, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to focus a little bit on air and water. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so now if you look at the gestures that Steiner talked about for these, um, these air and fire sounds, mm -hmm. I mean air and water sounds, mm -hmm. um, he talked about, well, he gave the indication that the R, if you look at how the R has been done in the past, you know, you see how what's, what's happening is that, you know, there's this rotational movement. Right. And if I were to just do it with my shoulders, you see? Yeah. And then my arms come into it. Yeah. You see, and then my hands. Yes. But basically, if you just break it down, it's, it's this activity. Yeah. It's this rotational movement. Yeah. This movement that comes towards you. Yeah. Comes towards you. Yeah. Whereas then he talks about the L, and that's been done traditionally like so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, and if you look at the side, mm -hmm. you see that it's, it's it splashes going, over top of you. It's going in this <laughs> rotation. Exactly. So if you were to break it down from here, you mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. it, it's 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 that. And you see, then if I were to break it down even for like, mm -hmm. just, you know, if I were just to use that rotation, you see, it opens my limb out. Oh yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And if I were to pull it back. It's, and it's an see, R, right? So mm -hmm. it's the L, mm -hmm. and it's the R, right? So it's wending out, mm -hmm. wending back towards self, right? And we know that when we breathe air in, you see, we come to ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the airy sound, mm -hmm. and the watery sound. So I like to say that the watery sound is really this this Kundalini sound. Uh huh. The water has directly to do with our chi, mm -hmm. our Kundalini, our you know, our argon energy, our flow, our, mm -hmm. our ki, whatever you want to say it is, our, our mana, mm -hmm. um, that, that's the watery element, that's that L sound. And if you look at it, you know, if, if um, you know, it's, it's, if I were to start here and, and bring that sound up, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it opens me up. Mm -hmm. And then once, I, once you're open your limbs out, which... You have to do it the other way. Right, you, you, you come back toward, towards yourself. Mm -hmm. And so it basically you break it down in uh, what the therapist would say, there's extension mm -hmm. and there's flexion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have here, ex, you know, you have extension and flexion. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it's, what most children have a problem with because they don't do that enough. Well, yeah, they don't need to know about all this, but uh, the instructor can have a, a better sense uh, to give uh, them uh, things to do that are doing that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and you know, then the Wolner teacher, if they're being encouraged to do Eurythmy and to learn these archetypes, then they can be a much more effective teacher in their lessons. And they can mm -hmm. also be using examples right out of their out of daily life. Yeah. And seeing how for the children, you know, there are these sounds that are operative. Yeah. yeah. And it's very important. Now, now, now you see that, you know, this is really, uh, Interesting because we, we're always employing R and L in order to bring the heaven and earth together. Mm -hmm. You see, these two are, are sort of, you know, in a sense, we're kind of here in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we're employing, in, in a sense, we're here, you know, as, um, you know, as, as the quintessence. You, you might know? as well make a kite or something. Uh, yeah, I know what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> there we go. Here we've got the chestahedron. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's our, that's yeah. our, you know, that's, yeah. um... Yeah. Yeah, with our heart, we... That's really, we, that's our heart. That's our, that's our center. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and we employ these, these, these sounds from this middle space, because mm -hmm. you can see it's in our limbs. Mm -hmm. And so when we want to make a buzz sound, you see we, 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 we un unfold out, our forces come out, mm -hmm. and we gather up, we buh, you know, that's the buh sound, or the duh. You know, you see these, these sounds everywhere, the k, yeah. you know, yeah. the g. Yeah. In karate, we have the, 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 we have huh. the, the k, which is the, um, 
you know, which is a strike, mm -hmm. and then we have the, the block, mm -hmm. you see, and we have ka and ga, and they're in, in the same family of sounds. They're one's harder, one's softer. You know, there's, you're going to find all these different dualities within certain things. So in other words, when people get old, yes. tell me what they do. Well, they, we're get, we're, we get a lot more, the, the forces of ka are becoming stronger. We're, 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 we're but condensing. Go back, to, go back to R and L. We're, we're, we're solidifying. We're yeah. doing R. Yeah, yeah. We, we get, oh, bend yeah. over. Yeah. We get bent you over. get bent over, and you don't do enough L's. You get bent over, and then it becomes exponentially more difficult because then you're getting too much. As we I talked about the Apollonian Dionysian forces. Yeah, yeah. Then mm -hmm. you see you're 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 uh, allowing gravity to have more purchase on you, and it yeah. just gets worse. Yeah, it yeah. It just gets worse. And then people can't. Uh, they, diff it's difficult. they need they need water. They need L. Yeah, and so for to example, be more fluid. Uh, uh, this gentleman, Jamin McMillan, he does really great work with posture because mm -hmm. you know he understands you know that there mm -hmm. are these these there are extremes mm -hmm. and he works on posture so that we we can stand in this middle mm -hmm. and, and and when we move through uh, you know move through life we we can do it with the most minimal amount of effort because mm -hmm. we are in our center mm -hmm. you see? and so the, the Dionysian forces can can we can we can streamline our our actions because <clears throat> if you think about it we're we walk through life and the forces that are coming towards us are just are naturally going to bend us over. Yes. Because yes. if we were to walk backwards often, yeah. Yeah. and that could be done therapeutically. I did this with elevated linear running. Yeah. I would rather learn how to run backwards. Yeah, I do you, too. You see the I forces, do that too. The forces want to bring you in the upright. Yeah. So yeah. again, we just use our common sense, and you can start to see how you can start playing with these uh, these uh, polar forces mm -hmm. that are present always in in. in if you, you know, isolate things, there's going to be a, a polarity in, in that yeah. one, so, so example. Yeah, and then you can balance things out, and you, you don't ever thing. need to be old and bend over. You don't necessarily need to be, yeah. No. You understand these forces of L and R. Exactly. And you can see then how this, this, this you know, this L is, is this force of Kundalini. Mm -hmm. It's this force of, of life force coming up, mm -hmm. and then the R is a force of consciousness. Yeah. And the force of consciousness and the Kundalini, and they meet here in the middle. Mm -hmm. Where blood and nerve meet. All right. Meaning, excuse me, blood and air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have this whole thing where, you know, obviously yeah. our heart. Obviously, where, that's you know, where blood it goes. and air are being mixed. Exactly. In yeah. the heart. There you go. Um, I mean, all this is. Uh, that's what you call applied eurythmy. That's just what you call applied eurythmy. Because uh, people don't normally think about these things this way. No, and they're it's normally. It's a good way uh, to start. Yeah, yeah, and this is this is, this is a good start, you know, that we can start to uh, to do that, to start employing these these sounds. Um, here, let me just. Uh... Is there a relation? <laughs> yeah, is there a relation to music? Well, I want to, well, let me just show you something that's interesting. So, okay. I'm just being silly. We are in the middle, right? And we're always employing these these forces of L and R, mm -hmm. and when we when we form gesture, because again. They're bringing the, these earth, or these earth sounds and these fiery sounds together. And you know, I gave you a couple examples, like the M sound. I, I call it the mud sound because it has a watery quality to it. Yeah. And it's kind of a transitional sound. Yeah, it's different than the G or the K. Right. You know, but you still your lips meet when you do it. Yes. Mm. And you'll see in curative eurythmy, they always are, Steiner always used the L and the R. It, uh, they're in, really. In, in speech pathology, they call these uh, liquid consonants, and, and, and they're L and they are. I mean, it's, <laughs> stuff isn't like, you know, we don't want to make it up. It's already out there. So let me just grab the skeleton for a minute. Yeah, go ahead. Right, right mm -hmm. here, I think. <laughs> you do have a skeleton in the closet, do you? Right, yeah, here it is. <laughs> so um, 